in an exhibition match that will happen after the grand finals has concluded. But let's go ahead and hop right into the action. We have got an amazing set of games ahead of you. Oh, we already saw goodness. an amazing set of games. Let's see, with all of this information now, Aaron, that both of these players has ga have garnered from each other's teams, let's see the adjustments made here. And another adjustment now coming out from Ryota, starting with that stack attack and that Mian Xiao. And guess what? Serena's gonna make an appearance this time for Santino. Both of these players are so good with coming up with new leads, and Santi starting the game off with such an amazing lead. I absolutely, this is just such a brilliant adjustment, right? Like the Serena blocks the potential fake out. You can just go for that skull. You know that the wide guard is coming out from the Mian Xiao as well. So both players making an adjustment, and I think Ryota recognizing, hey, Trick Room was pretty good for me in the last game. Rock Slide does pretty good damage into a lot of mm -hmm. Santi's Pokemon, so why don't I just try to set up the early Trick Room? But with Santi leading the Kyogre and the Serena, you know, like, Ryota now absolutely knows. It's not even a gamble on whether or not Serena switches in. You just know yeah. Serena's out on the field, so you can't click that fake out, right? So Ryota also not having Protect on most of his Pokemon puts him in an even weirder spot where now he's making the switch out into Whimsicott, but you take so much damage along the way. So Skull's gonna start off the game for some pretty good damage here. And once again for Santee, no reason to really risk the uh, Water Spells. Knockoff just goes into the Serena, does get rid of the Berry, but U-Turn is gonna come out here. And so, you know, Ryota at least does protect the stack attack. It doesn't faint to a single Skull here, but still, I think Santee in a pretty good position because he's got that Tornado in the back. Mm -hmm. He's constantly bringing all the right Pokemon, so Tornadus can just come out. Now you can just click Tailwind with that and Scald away, and the Whimsicott just does no damage, and Ryota has no water resists other than the Whimsicott, which took 50% from the Scald, right? So Scald now is just so, so safe into any single Pokemon. Ooh, I kind of do like going for a little bit of damage here, just in case you're worried that the damage calc is not going to be able to pick up that Mian Xiao. Um, but we'll have to see here. I think that just going for the Scald is very safe and may as well go for the Hurricane too, I guess, if you're worried about trying to pick up both Pokemon. You can always set up the Tailwind later, I feel like, and, and it gives you a little bit more headroom, I feel like, when it comes down to when those Tailwinds expire. Yeah, you know, Santi debating between Tailwinding and Hurricaning here. With Hurricane, you can just potentially pick up a double KO. Uh, the slight fear is maybe you want a Tailwind because you risk... Um, a critical hit and so yeah. he's gonna play it safer get that speed control i think santi might also be now a little bit nervous to click tailwind as frequently because of that stack attack up but i think tailwind skull here is still just so safe right like stack attack is not going to set up trick room with this kyogre on the field this whimsicott does nothing basically after the tailwind is set up other than get some chip damage from moonblast so a brilliant adjustment by santi and it catches ryota's lead uh perfectly for him right so now you get the tailwind you don't even risk getting a close combat crit uh, the other really critical thing here is actually less about the critical hit and it's more about about a knockoff from the Mian Shao. If the Tornadus does not click Tailwind there, then the Mian mm -hmm. will knock off Kyogre, get rid of that Choice Scarf, and suddenly, if you don't have Choice Scarf anymore, well, hey, the Calyrex Shadow Rider can actually outspeed the Kyogre. And so, yeah. Santi making the correct play there, looked like he was debating between Hurricane, debating between the Tailwind, but the Tailwind means that there's no potential for that knockoff to come off, and now, Santi's just in a phenomenal Ooh. position where he has so much damage, and he's still outspeeding with this Kyogre. Yeah, so I see the Helping Hand come out here from the Whimsicott, which is going to be able to make sure that that I, probably Astral Barrage, I would assume, is going to do a lot of damage. But Scald going to be enough to pick up the Whimsicott here. And this is where things get really interesting because uh, we're going to see the Astral Barrage come out with that Helping Hand. It's going to be able to do a lot, quite a bit of damage here. But does this Tornadus hang on at all? Uh, it does not. I was kind of wondering if we would see a little bit of, like, Hurricane, maybe... Uh, get the confusion come through from that and see if that would actually play a little bit of a role. Yeah, either way, now, you know, Santi gets the free switch in into this Rillaboom. I think mm -hmm. the one thing that just makes this a little bit awkward is that since Ryota's team has so few protects, like, we know Ryota doesn't have protect on the stack attacker, but I don't believe it's actually revealed its full moveset yet to Santi. Uh, and so Santi has to play some guessing games, right? Now, because we know it doesn't have protect, if you just scald into the stack attacker and knock off into the Calyrex, boom, that's a double KO. But yep. uh, one thing that you might be a little bit worried about is the potential protect, right? If you're worried about the Protect, then you can actually Scald and maybe glide into the uh, Calyrex. But it looks like Santi here just, uh, you know, opting for the Scald into the Stack Attack a slot. A uh, Scald glide into the uh, Calyrex would put you in a really good spot, right? It also covers for the potential Protect option. But then the problem is, okay, what if the Calyrex ends up protecting? You double up into it and then the Stack Attack sets up Trick Room. That could be really bad. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can see Santi kind of debating between the two plays here. Who do I scald? Uh, do I just hope that the stack attacker here does not have protect? He does correctly scald into stack attacker, and without the protect oh. here, that is just going to be a one-hit knockout. 
Oh my gosh, it is going to be super effective. A one-hit knockout there onto the stack attack, and no trick room this time for Ryota. And this Astral Barrage will be enough to pick up this Kyogre, uh, but it's a question of whether or not the Rillaboom is able to hang on, <laughs> and on. it is. So now that knockoff should be able to go off without a hitch here, despite that plus one Grim Nay boost that that Calyrex had been able to achieve in the turn before. But this knockoff is definitely in prime range to be able to knock out this Shadow Rider Calyrex. And yes. that's it. <laughs> Sentino should be in a, in, able to win here. This has been a really fun set. We've had four games, and the leads have mixed up so much from both players' ends, right? Like, I think adjustments yeah. are so critical, especially in best of threes in DGC. And I feel like both players are really just trying to out-adjust their opponent. But for Santi, he gets the much better end of that trade-off, where if you, like, that stack attack, especially with it not having protect, is just in such an awkward position. Because, yeah, if you lead it and Kyogre's out in front of you, you basically have to switch, right? So yeah. I think going into this next game, Ryota probably recognizes, okay, if Kyogre comes out as a lead again, which it has in, you know, half the game so far, can't really risk uh, leading stack attack again because if I do then so much of like what Santi's team does really well is often just win you the game on turn one right so many of the games that we've seen him play in this tournament is him just having an immaculate lead and then playing turn one perfectly as well and just getting so much momentum that it's so difficult to come back from because Santi has yeah. so much late game damage and so for Ryota I think you probably re-explore maybe don't lead that stack attack this time and go back to one of your earlier leads or you could play really risky and say you know what Santi's not going to lead Kyogre I'm just going to lead stack attack once again but I, I think it's safer for Ryota to maybe just go back to something that was a little bit safer like the Whimsicott Calyrex or uh, Mian Shell Calyrex for example or Whimsicott Mian Shell any combination of those three. Yeah, especially if, you know, you're having to switch out turn number one, you're just giving Santi so much of that momentum, like you were exactly. mentioning. And then Ryota's giving up a ton of it. All right, Santi is one game away from becoming the Invitational Champion after Bracket Reset. It's actually going to be the Stack Attack Elite once again. Uh, so, yeah, willing to lead Stack Attack, I have to say I'm pretty surprised about that. Uh, and. Santi once again bringing his fourth different lead of the tournament, going with Tornadus and Urshifu this time around. So Urshifu is really interesting. There's also the Rain Dance on the Tornadus here. So, you know, you can go for something like Rain Dance and Surging Strikes. At this point, Santi actually has the Serena in the back. You know, that's one thing mm -hmm. that he's done really well throughout the course of the set. Sometimes bring Serena, sometimes don't bring it. So this time, Ryota might be baited into thinking, well, you haven't brought Serena in a while. I'm just going to click Fake Out this time around. But in doing so, you know, the Serena will just completely bypass attack. So Santi making so many adjustments throughout the course of the set, and I think it's just been so fascinating to watch. Yeah, it really has been super fascinating to watch from, from Santi's perspective of things. Remember in his PC1 run where he was kind of waiting a lot to be able to set up that Colossal specifically? I feel like Santi's doing a very similar thing here with that Kyogre, but the fake out, you can't use it now because Queen Lane Majesty is here to stay. So Urshifu can go for those Surging Strikes. So even though Ryota does have that stack attack on the field, oh, it's actually gonna be the Mian Shao here. Just going after the Mian Shao and just making sure that you can get a knockout onto that particular Pokemon on that takes away so much pressure from Ryota and this is so smart right because okay let's say Ryota sets up trick room what are you gonna do right you bring in your Caloric Shadow Rider Santi yeah a tailwind so that Caloric Shadow Rider will actually be the slowest thing on the field same thing with Scarf Indy so I, I love Santi's willingness to actually let trick room go up and this is like the awkward thing about Ryota's team right where it's like it's not really a trick room team none of the Pokemon actually function mm -hmm. well in trick room other than stack attacka and it's actually going to be Whimsicott coming in, so likely no Indity. Whimsicott's actually maybe better than the Indity or the Calyrex in this position, but it's still in such a weird spot where now the stack attack does not even do that much damage, right? The best thing you can do is maybe go for a body press, uh, and that will, you know, get some chip damage off. Otherwise, yeah, it's Rock Slide, hope for flinches. I think the, the play here is to Rock Slide, hope to flinch Urshifu, and then Moon Blast to just KO it. But if you don't get the flinch on either Pokemon here, that Whimsicott's just going down. No flinch on Serena, so there's Triple Axel. Yeah, Triple Axel just going to be able to come out here and should be able to clean oh. up this Whimsicott <laughs> as well. All the critical hit. I, I don't know if that actually mattered based on how much damage those hits were doing, but it certainly doesn't hurt, Aaron. And so Urshifu, yeah, is going to flinch here, but I feel like Santi is in such a dominant position right now, getting rid of so much of the support on Ryota's side of the field. So you can bring out your Shadow Rider Calyrex, but the speed tiers are in play right now because that Calyrex is going to be super slow in Trick Room.
Exactly. Uh, big flinch there, right? If you don't get the flinch there, then you just do substantially more damage. That's probably a two hit KO onto the stack attack. So Santi still has to be a little bit careful, even though he has the numbers advantage. The awkward thing is with that Choice Scarf Kyogre, the Caloric Shadow Rider will actually outspeed it under Trick Room. Mm -hmm. So if you lose too many Pokemon too quickly and suddenly you have Tornadus and Kyogre, well, Tornadus doesn't do anything damage wise at this point in the game. So, uh, you know, that's definitely a tough flinch for Santi to deal with. But, you know, he is still definitely in, I think, the driver's seat. And the main thing here is, yeah, to, to watch out from getting KO'd by something like a body press. Uh, so I really like the decision to detect with Urshifu here and yeah. just get damage onto Calyrex. Yeah, I really Ooh, like nice the decision gyro as ball. well. Ooh, yeah, the gyro ball just gonna be able to knock out this arena here. So that does actually provide a little bit of a free switch for Santi, but this beast mm -hmm. boost could prov prove very, very difficult to deal with, especially given that um, uh, it might, it might be difficult to deal with, especially versus that Rillaboom. And I just realized we should have seen this earlier. There's even no Kyogre in the Yeah, there's Santee. no Kyogre. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, wait a minute. It's it's so easy to just think Kyogre comes out every single time, but that's actually such an interesting decision here. How rare do you see someone oh. not bring their restricted Pokemon into this matchup, right? But Ooh. now you've got the Surging Strikes. We see that tech on Tornadus as well. The main thing I'm Rain curious dance. about here is, yeah, do you, like, does does a body press from the stack attack a KO the Urshifu, basically? Otherwise, you're, you're basically hoping for another Rock Slide flinch here. It's going to be the Rain Dance, and this will allow the Surging Strikes to, I think, just KO either Pokemon here. So let's see what stack attack it goes for. This is a really, really critical turn. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead Rock and see slide. how this... Oh, Rock Slide! Oh, okay, both Pokemon hang on, but the flinch, the flinch! Oh, Not very effective. It's a, crit a critical hit. <laughs> no flinch! Oh, no oh. flinch! Surging Strikes is going to be able to go off here. Wow, in the rain as well, just being boosted by the rain should be enough. I think the Shadow Rider Calyrex is absolutely going to go down here. And that's a great position to be in if you're Santi. Because Trick Room should be expiring soon. Exactly, and you've set up the rain, so it's like you don't really have to worry about the stack attackers attacks as well at this point, right? You can protect yep. the Urshifu. Uh, if the tornado is faint, well, then you get bring in Rillaboom. At this point, Urshifu should win the game, right? So all you need to make sure is stall out this Trick Room. You have that fake out from the Rillaboom in the back. What a mix up here from Santee, going with a completely different core four here. Uh, and there was the body press, so yeah, I, I was really curious if body press could have KO'd the Urshifu last turn, right? Because it had the defense boost from that beast boost. So uh, Ryota, you know, probably thinking, okay, well, if Body Press isn't going to get the KO, I have to go for the flinch, and a flinch will essentially win me the game. But now there is no more Trick Room. Urshifu in the rain. It's got that mm -hmm. Surging Strikes. And between the Surging Strikes and the Hurricane, I think we're going to see Santi Tarquinio win the 25th Invitational Grand Finals after an intense bracket reset. Ah, just phenomenal play from both players here. I think, you know, the matchup was stacked against Ryota, but Santi also played so phenomenally well. He had four <laughs> different lead adjustments within five games. He is going to win this tournament, defeating four world champions along the way. Congratulations to